Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some r slash a matter butthole. <laughs> and if you love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. You've been all super supportive just recently, and I can't thank you enough for what you do. Honestly, thank you so much. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story does come with an update from Unk from the Dunk, who says, Am I the asshole for not charging my nephew rent after he moved in with me and my family? So, I, 44 male, have an older sister, Miriam, I hope I got the pronunciation right, 47 female, and she has a son, Javid, 18 male, with her husband, Joe, 51 male. My wife and I have two daughters, one 15 and the other 12, and no sons. My daughter loves Javed like their big brother, and in our culture, he isn't their cousin, but it's their brother. My wife loves Javed like her own son. When I'd broach having a baby to give our kids a brother, she'd point out they have him as a brother. She got me thinking that way too, as I love my sister and Javed is a good boy, but I do know he isn't my son, even if I love him like one. The point of contention is this. In September, Javid started university and his parents evicted him and made him take out loans because he's 18 now. This was odd to me since my parents never did any of that. But their house, their rules. As my sister explained to me, this is what Joe's father did with him and he thinks it'll work because it has for him. Javid moved out to a place where he could pay low rent while also working as much as he could. He bombed all his midterms, so he came crying to my wife and I. I didn't want to take him in because that might ruin the relationship with my sister, which has been rocky. But my wife pointed out how much he was struggling and I agreed. We're not going to make him pay rent as if I wouldn't ask that of my kids. I'm not going to ask it of him. We make him do chores like cleaning, watching our girls, getting groceries on our cash and, and work a much lighter schedule part-time job to focus on those loans and a tutor. In the weeks he has been here, he seems readier for his finals, but damage to his grades may already be done. My sister came over yesterday with Joe. They knew Javid was here. I didn't hide that from them, but they assumed that he was paying rent. After asking how much I charge, I admitted I don't charge and Joe got all angry and told me I was undermining his authority. I pointed out my parents never charged me rent and I wouldn't charge my kids rent and I'm not going to treat Javid differently if he lives in my house. They left like after that and I got a text from Miriam saying that she and Joe were going to come over until I enforced their rules for Javid. I feel like an asshole because I do love my sister and I don't want to cause her difficulties, but I don't want Javid to go down the wrong path since what was happening before was not working for him. Now, first off, you know, it's your house, so you can do absolutely what you want in your house. You can charge people rent if you want to, and don't charge them if you want to. As simple as that to me. But also, this guy's 18 and they kicked him out. And you're just being an amazing person to help support this person's future and helping them get back on the right path because like you said, the, the previous one wasn't working for them and you spotted that, so well done for that. And what are the parents expecting here? The parents won't support him themselves. They're trying to stop other people from supporting him as well. It just makes no sense to me. So I wonder where we're gonna go with this update, but we're gonna cover a couple of comments first. But we'll start off from We Are Here who says, Jared is 18. His parents don't get to make rules for him anymore. Not the asshole, but they are. Whatever 2030 says, not the asshole. Screw these parents. Support him because he needs it. His parents will be the ones who lose out in the end. Lolita says, not the asshole. It's your home. You make the rules. They also don't have authority over your nephew since he is an adult. And they made that clear by kicking him out once he turned 18. They don't get to kick him out and dictate how he moves forward. For whatever reason, your brother-in-law is hell-bent on making sure his son struggles and has a rough start in life. Maybe he believes it'll help him build character. Who knows? Or maybe they don't want to look like bad parents since you are helping him, and they are not. Regardless, you're doing the right thing by helping your nephew so he doesn't fall behind. Stab me some more says absolutely not the asshole. He is 18 and they kicked him out. Their rules no longer apply. I applaud you and your wife for taking him in and providing for him better than his parents. Your sister and her husband care more about doing things the way Joe did rather than focusing on their child's success. University costs have skyrocketed since Joe was in school. The fact he managed then doesn't mean he could today. They are the assholes. And one more from the Austrian dude who says not the asshole. The only asshole in the story is Joe. College in the 80s was a bargain compared to now and rent as well as buying a place was easy. You show empathy and compassion towards a struggling teen when the parents can't be bothered to step up. 
Next post will be from your sister in the parenting subreddit titles, why won't you talk to me anymore? Too true. And now let's move on to that update to see what happened next. So update. So it's been a little bit and everything has gone crazy, but first I want to thank you all for convincing me I did the right thing. I stuck to my guns and my wife and I told Javid we see him as our son and this was his grandfather's and mother's house, it will always be his too. He passed his classes but the damage was done and he has a shit GPA. As for his loans, thankfully TD was fair to him, so it was a no brainer to help him pay it off this semester, he's going much better and I have no doubt his grades will improve. Here's where it gets a bit wackier because a few days after I did that, I got a call from Miriam. Met her at Tim Hortons and turns out she and Joe had a big fight after they left my home and now she's divorced. Turns out that it's been bad for them since the pandemic started and got worse ever since they evicted Javid and this united front was a sham. To her, it's been like they've been divorced for two years already. She told me she reconnected with Amir who lived next to us for a few years when he was a teenager and they became great friends but Joe was mistrustful because he's a decade younger than her and a good looking guy. The big thing was Joe refusing to get vaccinated even though he says he's liberal. She's a researcher and Javid has fucking asthma. I'm guessing divorce sent Joe off the deep end because he's going to Ontario to join the convoy. Well, I went with Miriam to his house, got everything and moved her back into our home. Honestly, Miriam has been the happiest I've ever seen her in a very long time. Amir asked her out after New Year's and they started dating. So I guess all Joe feared has come to pass. It's weird because I still remember him as a teen, but I do have to admit he's a successful guy who makes her happy and like she said, her marriage was done for a while. He seems to really love her. My daughters love having Miriam around. My eldest keeps asking her for tutoring in bio and, and youngest clings to her and is learning knitting from her. It was a bit awkward for Javid at first, but Miriam said sorry to him so much when she came back. She wouldn't stop hugging and kissing him while crying, so of course he forgave her. What son wouldn't? I would admit she has been spoiling and babying him since then, or trying to, and says sorry to him every day, even though he says she doesn't need to and keeps promising to make things up to him. The big news is that my wife is pregnant, even though we use protection. I don't know if I have a son or a princess coming, but I know my child will have a full family waiting a father, mother, aunt, two amazing sisters and the best big brother possible. We decided we'll all take a set of family photos during Javid's reading break and then another set next year once the baby's a bit older. Whoa, and that had some twists and turns in that story, but what do you make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we're gonna move on to the next story. And our next story comes from this issue 3434 who says, am I the asshole for sitting back and doing nothing when my mum told my wife that she'd take us to court for grandparents' rights? The situation is a bit of a mess. I'll just mention the relevant conflict at hand. So my wife Liz and I have been married for seven years. We have preschool aged kids and because we currently live in the same city as my parents, mum would take the kids while my wife and I work. Liz is the one with a much larger income. She got an even better job opportunity that is requiring us to move to another city. I agreed since I could easily find a job in my field in the city we are moving to. But after my family heard we are selling the house to move, hell broke loose. Sunday, mum and Liz got into a huge fight because Liz told mum we'll move away and hire a babysitter for the kids so she's no longer needed. Mum said she doesn't want her grandkids moving away, even said we should let the kids live at her house while we move. Liz laughed at her and mum lost it, basically saying that Liz was an ungrateful witch and that her grandkids moving will only happen over a dead body. They began exchanging harsher words and Liz snapped and told mum to butt out of private matters that don't concern her and said that she had no right to decide things regarding the kids. Mum firmly told her she was dead wrong and proceeded to tell her that she, as an involved grandmother, knows her rights and she will be taking Liz and me to court to ensure she still has to see her grandkids. Liz was in shock. She looked to the left and saw me sitting there not saying or doing anything. She told me to check my mum but I told her she was being unfair to mum and that mum had to feel upset because she will no longer be able to see her grandchildren. I honestly told Liz that she was a bit selfish to not consider my mum's feelings and her crucial presence in the kid's life first. Liz started arguing with me saying she couldn't believe I didn't stand behind her and defend her after hearing mum saying she'd get the court involved. I said mum was upset and cannot be blamed for a reaction. 
Liz started yelling at me, calling me unsupportive and an enabler, then went home with the kids, insisting my family is my problem and I should handle it, although this whole moving thing was her idea. Situation hasn't been resolved and Liz and mum are getting more intense in their fights. I choose to stay out of it because both have valid arguments, but Liz has called me awful for not siding with her. After seeing how mum spoke to her and being okay with the fact that mum was willing to cause us issues in court. Am I the arsehole? I get that Liz wants my support, but I feel like mum has been punished through no fault of her own after being a loving grandmother to my kids. But Snoo Giraffes 3591 says everyone sucks here seriously, at least the way you tell it. Sounds like your wife did not appreciate all your mother has done for your family and told it in a pretty insensitive way again as you tell it and mum completely overreacted. Because people relocate all the time and still visit. Is it hard? Sure. Are you guys likely to visit now that she flew off the handle? Less so than before. So her overreaction accomplished nothing. But you. You suck because you and your wife made this decision together. Because as you said, you can get a job anywhere. If you had concerns about this decision and its effects on your mother and children, you should have discussed those concerns with your wife when you guys were deciding this. And you should have either been the one to tell mum or at the very least helped your wife. You did not have her back when all she was doing was telling her about the decision two of you made. She was insensitive about it, but it was still a decision you made together. You let it get as far as your mother threatening legal action. You know you are going to go through that court battle too, right? Would have been in your best interest not to let it get that far. Kaz Z says, you're the asshole. Your mum threatened to take your family to court so she can get custody of the kids. She wants them to live with her. This is a disproportionate reaction to being told that someone is moving. Are you okay with moving to a new city? Sounds like you are. Why would you ever let anyone threaten your wife with court for doing something incredibly beneficial for your family? Why would you let someone threaten you instead of offering to get on a plane to see you? Crock of Pot says in quotes, insisting my family is my problem and I should handle it although this whole moving thing was her idea. And then says, it may have been her idea, but you agreed to it. If you had an issue with moving, you should have had that conversation with your wife. Agreeing with it to your wife's faith and then letting your mum do the dirty work of fighting her about it is cowardly and passive aggressive. The fact that you are continuing to sit there like a bump on a log while your relatives harass your wife is failing hardcore as a spouse. Get your mother out of your marriage or you won't have a marriage. You're the arsehole. Fastar77 says, lol, you are spineless and you're the arsehole. That's your family and kids. Your mother doesn't get to decide and at no point does being upset allow you to be unhinged like your mum. Absolutely pathetic behavior. And one more from August Baby Leah who says, you're the arsehole, you're the arsehole, you're the arsehole. Are you effing serious? OP said, told her she was being unfair to mum and that mum had to feel upset because she would no longer be able to see the, her grandchildren. I honestly told Liz that she was a bit selfish to not consider my mum's feelings and her crucial presence in the kid's life first. And I said, you were the biggest asshole for this. How do you stand back and not support your wife? You're placing all of the blame on your wife. Look how easily your mother went disrespectful to your wife. Grandma can jump her ass on a plane or use all of these apps such as FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, WhatsApp, text, Duo, etc, etc, etc to see her precious grandchildren. Your mother cannot dictate what you and your wife do in your lives. Your mum does not financially provide for your children. She is involved in babysitting and being a grandmother. I hope when your wife finishes with your mother in court, she goes straight to divorce court and leaves your sorry self with your mummy. Dude, you're such an asshole. Now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. Our next story comes from workstress339 who asks, am I the asshole for quietly leaving my boyfriend's family Christmas when his mum was trying to set him up with a neighbor next door in front of me? <laughs> I visited my boyfriend's family for the first time and it was so awkward. I was literally just sitting there at dinner and his mum starts talking about how the neighbor girl is single and pretty and a good Christian, ick, and she was going to invite her to New Year's. I was sitting there like, what the fuck? It felt like she was trying to put me in my place or something and despite my boyfriend declining, he was being very unassertive about it when I would have been saying, what the absolute fuck are you saying, mum, in his shoes. So I got up, got my casserole, cake, pie, and wine from the kitchen and headed out. Drove home to my place and text my boyfriend. Not here for this reality dating show drama, lol. Is your mum always like this? 
He asked me where I was and I said I headed out. I'm not into the trashy reality TV drama vibe. He asked where and I said I was at home. He said he didn't want me to spend Christmas alone and I said, come on by then. And he felt conflicted because his family was already tense after they realized I'd left with my cooking and the dessert. <laughs> Fair play. I said, come by or don't. Just tell me when you figure it out. But then I ate a bunch of casserole and cake, drank a lot of wine and fell asleep. My boyfriend was texting and calling a lot when I was asleep, but I missed it all. He had apparently decided to leave the party and spend the night with me, but when I didn't answer, he ended up staying. Then the next day I asked him if he sorted things out with his mum so she doesn't go saying that shit anymore. He said he wasn't interested when it was happening. I asked if he could have a serious talk after the fact because I was there when it was happening and I don't think she got it. He wasn't sure. What? So I just made other plans for New Year's because even though he'd invited me to his, I wanted a good time and not to be dealing with pettiness. My boyfriend was frustrated. I dipped on New Year's too and it's been an ongoing argument. I think he should have chewed out his mum on Christmas for being petty and weird. He thinks I shouldn't have ghosted with my food, especially because I bought a few big parts of the Christmas dinner. Am I the asshole for dipping on Christmas dinner? It's one of those stories where I would have just loved to have been a fly on the wall in that situation, you know, when they realize that all the dessert's gone and the casserole too. <laughs> Absolutely not the asshole to me in this situation though. I think you did what you had to do. It must've been incredibly awkward for you. And we're gonna start us off with a cheeky everyone sucks here from Olivia Rose 85 who says, his mother sucks for acting like a careless asshole. She knew how she was behaving and probably would have behaved exactly the same on New Year's. Your boyfriend sucks for casually brushing off her behavior with a polite decline and probably didn't do much better when he sat her down to talk. He also sucks for expecting you to go to another family event so soon after the shit show. When you're visibly disrespected, they are the ones who have to earn back a second chance. You don't have to hand it right over to them. I'll one up this by saying he also sucks for expecting you to go to his parents' house for every holiday event. You shouldn't be expected to spend New Year's with these people. And you suck for basically taking Christmas dinner and sneaking away. You are also my hero for taking Christmas dinner and sneaking away. You might suck a little, but you suck the least and own the situation like a boss. <laughs> Dr. C says, I'm not really afraid to be a dissenter, so everyone sucks or you're the asshole to me. Not a super big one or anything, but you suddenly overreacted. If all the mum did was mention the neighbor and your boyfriend declined, it's majorly messed up to just assume someone should react at the level you want. It's fine to want that, but treating them like the bad guy for not using your solution for a solved problem is a bit petty. Unless I'm missing something, he shouldn't have to chew her out just to make it clear he likes and is dating you, especially if it's once. Point two is just leaving immediately with no communication, which is just a terrible way to go about any problem in a relationship. This being the source of the question is what makes me think you're the asshole. Like, if you like this relationship, you should want to react better in these situations, just like you wanted him to act better when his mum said what she did. Regardless of what this sub says, reflection should make this clear. This isn't how the situation should have went. And honestly, you can only control what you do in it. I agree you shouldn't go to any of the family events if they're acting like this though. Fellow Makua says, I mean, that's one way to be respectful to yourself, but all you did was show your boyfriend you are childish and his family that you're gonna be a problem. You should have just respectfully stated it's a shame you are late with being the matchmaker. Maybe you can take the neighbor girl out on your next free Saturday night. I'm sorry, I read the room wrong. I thought we were all discussing people dating when they are already in an established relationship. But then that's not very Christian-like, is it, Mrs. Smith? Honestly, thought you all were swingers on the side. My mistake. So how would you like to spend your Saturday nights at the Smith household? Assert yourself, establish the boundary and defend it respectfully. Not throw a silent tantrum and disappear, then expect your boyfriend to do the same, causing even more of an issue. You're the asshole. Nana says, not the asshole, hell yes, you are my hero. Now, if boyfriend can't stay up and be yours by having your back, he shouldn't get your dessert either. <laughs> Peanut butter chicken says, not the asshole. The only question is, why are you still with this guy? He seems to be missing his spine, which in my opinion, makes him a poor partner. Profile Electronic says, wait. You got up from the table, picked up the casserole, the cake and the pie and the wine. You must have made more than one trip from the kitchen to the car and none of them noticed you were gone. 
No one tried to stop you or apologize. Your boyfriend only asked where you were after you text him. I think you need to warn the next door neighbor what she's in for with thus wonderful sample of humanoid garbage. To which OP replied saying, lol, honestly, I would have hated to be in her shoes. She came to New Year's thinking she and her family were invited as a family friend and found out when she arrived, she was there to be set up with some random guy who already had a girlfriend. I didn't think to warn her because I didn't expect her to actually come, but apparently she did and it was awkward. What? Now, what do you guys make of that situation? There's some everyone sucks here. There's some not the assholes too. And like some of the everyone sucks here comments says, you know, there's probably a better way to deal with the situation if you really want to. But, you know, the petty side got to me on this one. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, a huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today, getting involved in the channel, listen to the stories and, you know, liking, subscribing and everything you do. It's honestly, it's a massive difference you make. So thank you so much and never forget the difference you really do make. Thanks for your love, your support and your time. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Wash my teeth up, wash my face, throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the window.